Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we will solve question 1.27 part A uh, from Mr. Oppenheim's book of Signals and Systems. And this is end chapter problem uh, on the request of a student. So, uh, the properties that we will have to verify for this question is whether it is memoryless time variant, linear, causal, stable. So this is the question. So first of all, let's see the, uh, whether it is memoryless or not. Now according to the definition, the output at a given time is dependent on the input at that same time. But let's take an example of a switch. Whenever we turn it on, or, uh, the switch, the light will be on. The moment we turn it off, the light will be off. So this does not have any memory. But if, let's say, we turn it off and the light goes off after 10 seconds, then we'll say that this switch has memory. Okay, now how do we verify this from the uh, our given equation? The strategy will be we have to put any value of t from 0, 1, 2, 3, etc here and if the output yt also remains at the same time then the system is memoryless let's see what we have done here that we have put t is equal to zero in this so this will be zero or this will be zero and we can write it like x minus two and x plus two now this is past and this is future how is that Let's recall the time diagram that we have studied. Uh, we are here at this point at time zero. And so minus one, minus two, etc., are the past. And plus one, two, three, etc., are future. Now, since this is minus two, therefore, we are in the past here. And since this is plus two, therefore, we are in the future. So the input at time zero is not depending on the input at uh, so, sorry, the output at time zero is not depending on input at time zero, rather it is depending on the past as well as the future. Therefore, this system is not memoryless, it has memory. So, this has memory and it is not memoryless. Now, I'll uh, carry the answer that is given in the solution manual, so we keep following what is the answer? The answer says that it will be linear and stable. So from here we know that it is not memoryless and that is why it is not written here. Okay, the next item is the time invariance. A system is time invariance if the behavior of the system does not change over the time. So let's see how to prove this. Okay, the strategy is that we delay the input, this, these are the inputs, so we delay them by time t0 and calculate the output, and then we delay the output, that is this output t, delay by t0, that is replace t by t minus 0 and calculate the output. And if these two outputs are same, then we will say that the system is time invariant, that is, it did not change with time. So this is our equation, case 1, we delay the input by t0, that means x t minus 2, delay by t0 will be x t minus 2 minus t0. Similarly, this one delayed by t0 will be 2 minus t minus t0. Now we'll put this in the output. So our output, which we'll now call is y dependent on t and t0 will be x, that means this one here, plus the second one. So this is our equation number one. In the second case, what we'll do? We have to replace t by t0. So if we delay the output t0, that is replace t by t0. Now keep this equation in mind, t will be replaced by t minus 0. Here also t will be replaced by t minus 0. And solving we get another equation. 
Now these two equations are not same because here it is minus sign and here it is plus sign. So since they are not same, therefore what we will call that this is not time invariant system. It is varying with time. So the system is not time invariant and that is why in the answer it has not been written that it is time invariant. Okay, the third question is the linearity. Linear system is a system that possesses the property of superposition. Actually, it should have been the property of superposition and scaling. So keep in mind that for linearity, both are valid. It has to be scaled or scaling should be valid and superposition or additive property should be valid. Now, if you recall from the circuits, the superposition is explained from a like here that if there are two sources and we have to find voltage across this point, what we can do is eliminate one of the source and find the voltage due to first source, then eliminate the first source and find the voltage due to the second source. And if you add these two voltages, it should be equal to the voltage due to the both the source. So that is the superposition principle. We have to keep that point in mind here. Okay. So now if you have a system and uh, input is xt, output is yt. And if we give an input x1t, then the output will be y1t. And if you give an input x2t, then the output will be y2t. Now the scaling property can be incorporated here that if you multiply the input by a, some value a could be 2, 5, 10, then the output also will be multiplied by the same value. And similarly in the second case, if it is multiplied by b, the output will also be multiplied by b. Okay, now let's say we have another variable xt, which is the combination of these two along with the uh, scaled values. So that means a x1 t plus b x2 t and if this is given in the system then what will be the output okay according to our our previous discussion whatever is the output it should be equal to the sum of the two the sum of the one source plus the other source so it should be equal to this value keeping this point in mind now let's see our equation Okay, so this is the equation, we'll pass it through this and this. That means we'll have an equation. In the first case, we'll uh, replace x by x1 and y by y1. So this will be our first equation, so passing through this system. And similarly, if we pass through this, then we'll get another equation in terms of y2. So these two equations we have got. And now we'll take a step two, that is apply x3, which is alpha x1t plus beta x2t. And as we had seen that the output should be this value, alpha y1t plus b y2t. Now here we'll put the value of y1 from here and y2 from here. So putting these values and simplifying, we get the final answer. Now for linearity, what was the condition? That the scaled values of these two, summation of the scaled values should be same. That means the scaled value of the first one is this, the scaled value of the second one is this, and their summation, if you add these two, this answer and this answer should be same. And if you see, these two are actually same ax1 t minus 2, ax1 2 minus t, similarly bx2 t minus 2, and similarly the third one. So that means the system is linear. And the system is linear, and so in the final answer he has written it to be linear. Okay. So linearity check done. Now uh, we will go to causality check, and causality is from the word cause. So simply, if you eat more, you will get fat. 
a system is causal if the output at any time depends on the input at the present time and or the past time. Now with this there is a but. But the output does not depend on the future time. Obviously, if you say that she is fed because she will be eating uh, burgers after six months, that is not true. So the output does not depend on the future time. So we'll carry this actually in solving our problem. Okay, and to have the value of time, we'll again follow this. We'll put t is equal to zero in our equation. So this was the equation, we put t is equal to zero and see the output. So putting t is equal to zero, the output will be y zero and this y minus two as we had seen earlier and this plus two. Now the crucial point is this, the output at present time is depending on the future time which is not allowed. Past is allowed, but future is not allowed from here. And therefore, this system is not causal. This is non-causal. And so, okay, one point that if with t is equal to zero, we don't get a very clear answer, then we should try a couple of other values like t is equal to minus one, t is equal to plus one, etc. Okay, so for this result, we cannot enter or we cannot call it to be causal, and that is why it is not read, written here. And finally, stability. Now, stable, a system is said to be stable if and only if every bounded input, now bounded means the finite input, if every finite input produces or results in a finite output or bounded output, then we'll say that the system is stable. Okay, and if like you are, you are giving bi, that is the bounded input, the output should be bounded output, and that is why this type of system is also called BIBO system, B-I-B-O. Okay, now we are assuming uh, two constants, mx and my, some finite positive number. So if input signal xt satisfies the condition that magnitude of xt is less than this number, which is less than infinity, that is this is finite number, then if the output also has a similar, that is magnitude of the output is less than another uh, positive number, which is again less than infinity, then we can say that for bounded input, we have got a bounded output. So the system will be stable system or BIBO system. Now let's apply this into the our uh, equation. This is the equation. We take the magnitude on both sides, this magnitude and magnitude of the right hand side, they're equal, but this magnitude will be less than equal to the individual magnitude, magnitude of this and this. And I had some doubt how it is coming. So let me just show you uh, with an example. Uh, this is less than A and B. And if we take A as five angle 30, B as four angle 30, then A plus B will be summation of this, will be this, and the magnitude will be 8.87. Individually, if you are taking the magnitude of this one will be five, and the magnitude of this one will be four. Five plus four is nine. So in the magnitude of the individuals is greater, five plus four, nine, than the uh, uh, summation of the uh, magnitude of the summation. So that means we can write this to be less than equal to uh, the individual values. And now we know that we have assumed these to be uh, constant values, m. So this is also x, and this is also x. So we'll write this as constant value mx, and this is also uh, a constant, rather finite value mx. And this can then, then be written as this less than 2mx. 
So what we can see from here that the magnitude of the output is less than some finite value or input to be finite value. So we can say that the output yt is bounded and hence this system is stable. And so in answer, we will write it to be stable. So this is how uh, you can prove uh, various parameters of a given question. So I hope uh, you have been able to follow this. Let me know your feedback. Thank you.